The Expanse is a science fiction series set in a future where humanity has colonized the solar system. But tensions simmer between Earth, Mars, and the asteroid belt colonies. The Expanse is renowned for its realistic and hard science approach to space travel and combat. And the ships within its universe are central to this grounded aesthetic. Unlike many sci-fi franchises with artificial gravity, energy shields, or faster-than-light travel, The Expanse adheres to Newtonian physics, making its ships feel like logical extensions of current space technology. We have gathered a list of 10 largest ships in the franchise, including space stations. So starting off from the bottom of the list, with number 10, we have Guanxin. Now this is a notable ship in the Expand series, particularly significant in the political machinations of Jules Pierre Mao, the wealthy and influential CEO of Mao Kwiatkowski Mercantile and a key figure behind the proto-molecule conspiracy. Jules Pierre Mao's yacht is approximately 205 meters long. It is also described as being yacht size, despite its relatively large size, having only a dozen staterooms with each suite taking up nearly an entire deck. The ship has two shuttle bays, at least one of which deploys a launching platform to the exterior of the ship. Next, number 9, Edward Israel Colony Research Ship The Edward Israel is a significant ship in the Expand science fiction series, particularly featured in season 4 of the TV show. The colony and research ship is around 210 meters long, according to official ship scale. But some fans and sources suggest a larger size of 292 to 295 meters in an alternate scale. It was originally a hauler, converted for colonization and research, and is known for its bulky frame and gold foil wrapping. The ship features a centrifuge, likely for long-term orbital operations, and is equipped with heavy lift shuttles for surface operations on new worlds. Number 8. Nathan Hale There is a class of United Nations Navy battleships known as the Leonidas class. One specific ship mentioned within this class is the UNN Nathan Hale. The standard size of this ship class is 270 meters in length. They are the aging backbone of the UNN fleet. They are the result of a poorly funded fleet modernization program, leading to some drawbacks like inefficient Epstein drives, railguns that cannot fire under thrust, and outdated targeting for their point defense cannons. Despite these cons, they are versatile due to their wide array of weapons and a marine detachment with M-type dropships. Number 7. Agatha King The Truman-class dreadnought known as Agatha King is a prominent vessel in the United Nations Navy. It serves as the flagship of the UNN Jupiter fleet. It also plays a significant role in several storylines, particularly during the conflict with Protogen and later with the Free Navy. It's often depicted as a symbol of Earth's military might, though it also showcases the complexities and internal politics within the UNN. At 376 meters long, the Truman-class dreadnoughts are known for their robustness, versatility, and sheer firepower. While perhaps not as technologically sleek or advanced as other battleships, they are among the most powerful capital ships in the UNN. Next, MCRN Doniger. Now, the Martian Congressional Republic Navy Doniger is indeed the lead ship and namesake of the Doniger class battleship. At approximately 475 meters long, the Doniger makes it roughly the size of a 130 story office building. It also weighs around 250,000 tons. It represents the pinnacle of Martian military engineering and was a symbol of their formidable power and advanced technology. It served as a testament to Mars' ambition to become a dominant force in the solar system. The dramatic destruction of the MCRN Doniger early in the Expand series is a pivotal event. Anderson Station The ship is a significant location, primarily known for a pivotal event 
that shaped the character of Fred Johnson, one of the series' most important figures. Anderson Station is around 600 meters long and 270 meters in diameter. It acts as a resupply station located at the far end of the asteroid belt. It served as a critical hub for deep space operations and likely supported mining or other industrial activities in that remote region. The station also acted as a very small shipping depot, especially as a minor distribution station for water and air in its part of the belt, which was one of the sparsest stretches. Number 4. Tycho Station Unlike many space stations, this one is not fixed in orbit. It possesses powerful engines that allow it to travel throughout the solar system to various construction or project sites. At 680 meters long, Tycho is renowned for its construction capabilities, particularly its ability to build large and complex structures. This station is often a neutral ground and a key location for political maneuvering particularly concerning the Outer Planets Alliance. Number 3 on the list, Filth Station, a highly secretive and critical facility operated by Protogen Corporation. Its primary purpose is to serve as a hidden research laboratory for the protomolecule. It is roughly 790 meters long and 967 meters in diameter. This station is kept highly confidential. Its location is unknown to most, and it is deliberately underdefended in terms of overt military presence, because its greatest defense is its secrecy. Protogen relies on its stealth ships and the sheer vastness of space to keep it hidden. Number 2. Canterbury It is 1,000 meters in length and is an aging commercial ice hauler. Its job is to collect massive amounts of ice from Saturn's rings and transport it to Ceres Station, where it's processed for air, water, and remass for other ships. This highlights the vital importance of basic resources in the belt and the fragile supply chains that keep its inhabitants alive. The destruction of the Canterbury is the inciting incident of the entire Expand series. And finally, number one, Novu, one of the most remarkable and versatile ships in the series, known for its incredible scale and its transformative journey. The Novu was originally commissioned and built by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints at Tycho Station. Its purpose is to be a massive generation ship designed to carry thousands of believers on a centuries-long voyage to the star system Tau Ceti establishing a new home for their faith beyond the soul system. This explains its enormous size and its internal rotating drum, designed to provide artificial gravity for long-term habitation, including agriculture. And that is all for today. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one. Take care.